So we keep with our journey in our beautiful PC with the following exercise, which is another print combination. This time we have to create a function that displays all different combinations of two digits between 00, 00 and 99 listed by ascending order. This has to be the output, the expected output, and here it comes the prototype. It is very similar to the previous exercise, you agree? So I suggest you to check the previous one and understand it very well, and then approach this one. Let's go into the code. This is the full code in its glory, the full program. I have my main function at the bottom, as usual, that is gonna call my ft print comb2. This is the function uh, ft print comb2. And then I have an helper function, write n, that it is a routine that will print my number in the standard output. Now, as usual, let's focus our attention on the single parts of the code, on the single functions. Here is my print combination function that doesn't take any input and doesn't return back any output. I declare my variables. For this function, I have only one variable, which is an array, as you can see, that contains two elements. These two elements are short. Then I say, in position zero of this structure, of this array, set the value zero. And pay attention here, this is the value zero in binary, this is not the char zero. In the previous exercise, I was using chars directly, but this time I decided to use integers, namely shorts. Then I do the same thing of the previous exercise. I have a block while, which has inside another block while, as you can see here. So essentially the principle is exactly the same of the previous exercise. We have two numbers that we are gonna increment like an odometer. So we are gonna increment our number on the right till we arrive to 99 in this case. And then we are gonna increase the one in the bigger position and then zero or better, we are gonna set this value at the value of this number plus one, and then keep going on finding our combo, okay? This is pretty simple, if you understood the previous exercise, of course. External while loop, we have this condition, which is while the value in position zero in my vector is less than 99, so in human words, until the value in position zero, until the integer in position zero is maximum 98, what do I do? I set the value in position one of my array to the value in position zero plus one. Do you remember from the previous exercise? This is the main concept. You just, at every iteration, increase by one the number in the last significant position. Why is that? Well, because it will maintain the ascending property. At every iteration, we will have a number in the most significant position, which is gonna be one less than the number on the least significant position. It is pretty straightforward to understand. Let's go on with the, with the code. Here we have uh, the other nested loop, which has the condition this time, while v, while the value in position one in my array is less than 100, namely maximum value 99. So in a nutshell, this two while loop, I have two integers, I'm gonna turn this one until it will reach 98, and I'm gonna do the same with this other number until it reach 99, namely 98, 99, the last state of my combo. So what do I do until these two nested while loops finish? Well, here I say, if the value in position one is major than the value in position zero, then what do you do? You write the number in position zero with my subroutine that we are gonna check. Then you write a space in the standard output, so you have the number, a space, and then you write the value in position one. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then I have my question, if v in position zero is 98 and v in position one is 99, what do you do? Well, you just write in the standard output a point and a new line character because this is the last element of my combo. Else, what do you do? Well, you just write in the standard output a comma and a space. Then, as usual, I go to increment the value in position one. So I just turn, I just add one to this value in the least significant position. And here we go again. Now question for you. Is this if necessary? 
do I need this if here? If the value in position one is major than value in position zero. What do you think? Well, it is not necessary because with this stupid plus one, at every iteration, we are sure that the value in position one of my array is bigger than the value in position zero. Do you agree with me? Okay, let's try to compile and run. This is the output and it seems like everything is working properly. Now we're gonna check just, you can see 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2. And then let's just check. Then we arrive here, 0, 0, 9, 9, which is the last of the first loop. And then as you can see, we skip into 0, 1 and 0, 2. It seems like our code works. Now, let's try to remove this if statement. Okay, removed. Perfect, I've removed the if statement and let's check if everything is gonna work accordingly okay let's compile and run and uh unfortunately i don't have the mulinet with me the mulinet program so i can not really control properly but here it comes zero zero nine nine and then i have zero one zero two it seems like everything is working exactly like before so this very stupid plus one is allowing my code to save at every iteration a double check this is a pretty sick plus one as you can see a little tweak can really change uh, your code totally and i'll let you imagine for bigger programs how important it is to make these kinds of simple solutions because by now it, it is not important the performance of the algorithm but in real world it is so let's check again my double while loop my external condition 98 my internal condition 99, I have just outside my internal while loop the refresh that is gonna refresh the value in position one of my array one more, respectively the value in position zero. And then I just simply say, okay, in these three lines, print the value in position zero, a space and the value in position one that I know is one more than the one in position zero. <laughs> I repeat the same things many times so you will understand by osmosis this concept. Then I say, okay, are we in the last state? Namely, we in position zero is 98 and we in position one is 99. This time you just write a point and a new line. Otherwise you just write a comma and a space. So I think it is pretty simple. Here we can do some other optimization of the code. I leave you this riddle and maybe write in the comments. Someone else can find it useful. Just try to understand how this nested loop works and how you can optimize the number of operations of this code. Try to understand there is always a way to optimize the code. Overall, this is a very simple idea, right? We have two numbers, we're gonna turn them, and we just flush out. Now let's go to see the function write n that I wrote that allows us to write these two numbers. So here it comes. I have my function write n, uh, which stands for write number that doesn't return any value and that takes as an input a short that I called n. Here I declare a char because the right function requires a char. I cannot use integer themselves. Namely, I could, but in an hacker fashion, which is not our purpose here by now. Then I say, if um, the number is less than 10, why is less than 10? Well, we understand now. I say the char c has the value of n so the number that I give to the function plus 48. Do you understand what I'm doing? I'm sure you perfectly know the ASCII code by now. So when I say 48 plus a number, what I am really doing? Well, I say 48, which is the char zero plus the number itself. So let's say I have an integer, which is four. I say 48 plus four, which is 52, which is the number itself, which is four, but in the char form. Did you get what is going on? This expression is just a fancy way of saying, please transform the number in its char representation. Cool, right? So now I can use my integer because I have its char representation. Here I say, okay, write in the standard output the symbol zero, the char zero. Here I use a string constant, which is a pointer because you perfectly know that the right function requires an address a pointer is an address but we will dig into pointers a bit further 
By now, you just have to understand that write takes an address, and this is an address, an address, namely a pointer, and this is a pointer that points to a char zero. Never mind. Here I say, please, flush in the standard output the char zero, and here I say, well, now put in the standard output, print the char that I have created here, right? So for example, if I have the number four coming into my function, this char will be the number 52, namely the symbol 44. And here the code is pretty straightforward. I will print a zero because I have to pad the value as the, the exercise wants, when the value is less than 10, of course, and then I just write the char itself. This is pretty simple if you look at it, right? There's nothing fancy. Now the other case, here provided that the number is not less than 10, what is gonna happen? You see here, I have the return statement. So once this block is done, well, the function is finished. So this part of the code is not performed. So when I come here at line 26, I'm sure that the number is composed of two digits. And I'm sure about that because the calling function maximum arrived to 99 and 98. So when I'm here, I'm sure that I'm working with a number that is in the range 10 to 99. Here I say a fancy command, which is my char this time as the value of n divided by 10 plus 48. So what is this n divided by 10? Now look carefully to this slide that I've made. I want you to understand division in a very, very, very simple way. Like super, super simple. When I have, uh, for example, 1492 and I divide this number for 1000, what is really going on? What is happening? As you can see, I get as a result one, and then I have truncation of the number. As you know, I have as a result the number 1.492. In the computer though, when there is a division, there is a truncation of the value. So when I say 1492 divided by 1000, I have as a result one. I lose information with this truncation, but this is the way it is. When I say 1,492 divided by 100, I have 14. And when I say 1,492 divided by 10, I have 149. Look at this visually, understand it visually. When I make a division, for example, for 1,000, what I'm really doing, I am cutting the number. I am removing the last three digits, for example. I am removing in 1,492 the four, the nine, and the two. I'm throwing these digits into the bin. So I think that a really good way to visualize division is to visualize some scissors that are cutting the number. How many zeros do you want to cut? Well, pretty straightforward. If you divide by 10, is one zero. If you divide by 100, two zeros, and so forth. It is very, very simple. If I want to remove four digits from a value, I just divide for 10,000. So the number of zeros, if you want, determine the number of digits that will be cut off. So back to the code, here what I'm saying. Well, take the number, which I know is of course in the range from 10 to 99, and divide it by 10. What am I doing? I'm cutting this number, and I'm taking the number in the most significant position, if you want. So if I have 10, I will have a one here. If I have a 99, I will have a nine here. Then I do the same trick. I just add to 48 to get the char. So with this expression, I am getting the most significant digit. And pay attention here, this trick holds only because I am dealing with numbers that have two digits. You will see in the following exercise when we will have to print bigger numbers that this trick has to be um, re-engineered, sort of. So then I just write in my output my char, which is the most significant value, then I do another trick, which is now my char is n modulo 10 plus 48. Okay, you already understood that this 48 is something to shift an integer to a value. But what is this n modulo 10? Well, the principle is very similar to the division one. You see here, we have 1492 modulo 1000. What is happening? The result of this operation is 492. Look at the other operations, they are specular to the division operation, but they are the opposite. When I divide, I take the most significant value that remains, sort of, quote-unquote, understand me. Here, I take the opposite. In uh, 
1492 divided by 1000, I take only one. I take only one as a value. And then I throw the rest in the bin. There is a truncation. Here I do the opposite, just taking for myself 492. So we can say the division is a scissor that truncates the value and throw in the bin the rest. While the modulo is a scissor that cuts the value and take the rest. Do you get the catch? With these fancy slides, uh, I'm just trying to give you some useful, very intelligible tools to use these two operations to perform this algorithm that I'm doing. I think that this is elementary concepts that everyone can grasp, even a person with zero understanding of mathematics, essentially. I have two operators that are working in this fashion. One cuts the number and take the bigger part. Another cuts the number and take the lesser part, sort of. You can understand these two operators in this fashion and the thing will work, which is the thing we care about. Huh? So given that, I have my model operation here. If I have here the number 96, for example, what do I take? Well, I take the six. I have modulo 10 here. If I had modulo 100, I was taking all the number, 96 itself. So I take the least significant value in my number and I add 48, thus converting to a chart. And then I just print my chart. So now, do we understand these four lines? They're very simple, I guess. And this is basically it. This is the code in all its glory. As you can see, it works. I have all my combos written in the standard output. It ends with these numbers, of course, 98 and 99. And we are done. Okay, never give up and keep going on. Huh? Don't give up. <laughs> Bye. See you in the next one.